Hey guys, quick follow-up video to my one about getting your old phone to ring on modern devices. Um, big thing that I overlooked, and I want to correct that right now, and that is the ringer wiring. So a lot of these old phones were wired differently than modern phones are wired. Very subtle, but very important. They use what was called grounded ringing. And what that is, is instead of the ringer being connected across the line between tip and ring, red and green, or green and red to be more accurate, they had one side of the ringer connected to the line, I believe it was the red wire, and the other side of the ringer would be connected to ground. So if I pull back the cord here, this one doesn't have any kind of modern plug on it, so I have alligator clips deal um, you'll see there's this third wire this yellow wire that would have been connected to a ground so no matter what we do this phone isn't gonna ring and I'll show you pull up the other phone here and we'll dial it up I mean, for all you know, I dialed any other number, but it's this phone, and you can hear it's not ringing. And I'll show you. <laughs> the phone works. I answered it, but it doesn't ring. So, I'm gonna show you how to fix that. And it's really, really, really simple. Um, so, Obviously, grounded ringing isn't going to work on any modern device. It's not going to work on VoIP devices like the OBs or uh, any kind of analog telephone adapter, the Grand Streams, Vonage, any of those things. Um, it's not going to work if you have fiber optic service from the actual phone company, like if you have Verizon Fios or something. Um, they're going to put an optical terminal somewhere outside your house or in the basement or in your garage or something. And it's only going to have the two wires connected to it, the, the red and the green. And an old phone like this is never going to ring. Um, so the solution to that is we got to change the wiring. Um, the newer ones, are the any new, well, you're not going to get a new rotary phone nowadays, but um, even the ones made past the maybe the mid to late 70s are probably going to be wired correctly but a lot of these older ones are going to be wired for grounded ringing um, and even if you have a regular copper landline which I have a lot of those don't support grounded ringing anymore so in order for this old girl to work you have to change it or it's just never going to work so let's uh let me disconnect one side of that, and we'll pop it open, and I'll show you how easy this is to change. By the way, this is take two because I can't seem to remember colors, or at least say them right, two times in a row. So, let's zoom you down in and we'll show you what we're working on here. So, here's our ringer, here's our network. Stop ringing the bell, Chris. Here is the red and the green coming in from the line cord, and there's the yellow. You'll notice that yellow is connected to this black wire right here. That black wire goes down to the ringer. There's four wires on the ringer. There's red, black, slate, which is like a, it's whitish. Phone, par phone company parlance, gray is known as slate, Purple is known as violet. And phone guys get really kind of annoyed if you call them gray or purple. So just roll with it. And then underneath here, there's a slate red. And you'll find all those wires right over here. There's the red from the ringer. There's the black. There's the slate. There's the slate red. Typically... The red to black is connected to the line. Slate and slate red are connected across a capacitor. 
inside the network. Now that capacitor is there to block the DC current from the line. Now remember, ringing is AC, typically about 20 hertz, but the phone itself runs on DC. So what that capacitor does is it blocks the DC so it doesn't flow through the ringer coil and short out the line. Would also make any device or the phone company think the phone was off hook all the time. And of course it would never work. So that capacitor is very important. You don't have to mess with those. You also don't have to mess with this red one over here because it's already connected to the line. So the only thing you have to do is pull this black one off that ground, which is the yellow there. And this, this terminal is not connected to anything inside the network. It's known as a blind terminal. So that can just stay there and it won't hurt anything. And then try to keep my fingers out of the way best I can here. We connect this black line from the ringer. Oh geez, get in there. Two. There it goes. The green lead. And that's it. That is all there is to making that wiring change you need to make your phone ring. So, let's connect this back up. Oh boy. And let's just pick it up. And Yep, phone is working. I'm gonna leave this open. If you can actually see that ringer working. I'd say that's a whole lot louder, isn't it? And if I pick up the switch hook, Testing, one, two, three. Phone still works exactly as it should. That's all there is to it. That's all it takes to make that old phone ring. And um, I know there's something else I'm forgetting. Yeah, it couldn't have been important, I guess. That's it. So uh, I hope that helps somebody. I hope somebody's able to take their uh, classic phone and be able to use it again. Oh, whoa, there we go. Um, again, modern VoIP or fiber service, you're going to be hard pressed to get rotary dialing to work. But you can still answer calls, the phone will still work just fine. Um, there are some VoIP devices that do work with rotary dialing. Uh, Grandstream, the Handy Tone series is one that I'm absolutely 100% sure of. I have a couple of them. They do work with rotary dialing. Super cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's that should about cover it. So if my last video about adjusting the bias spring still didn't get your phone to ring, try checking the wiring. That may be all that's wrong with it. And remember, this is behind, this is connected to a partner ACS system. The partner system, while being bulletproof reliable and super easy to program and super versatile, has the crappiest ringing voltage of any phone system I've ever seen. I love that it supports analog single line telephones on any station port which means you can mix new phones, old phones, the actual system phones, and it'll all play nice together. But their ringing voltage is atrocious. It's like 40 volts, where regular ringing voltage should be 80 to 100. And you just heard how well this phone rings. I mean, it's... It is loud and clear. So I hope that helps somebody. Till next time, take care. Thank you for watching.